Hi, and welcome to Stress Busters, and happy Keisha Palooza. Uh, due to technical difficulties with Facebook, we, this is normally broadcast on uh, my business page on Life and Focus Coaching, but we needed to broadcast it on my personal page because we are off location. As you can see, we are at this gorgeous harbor. I'll let you look around um, to see the beautiful harbor and people out enjoying uh, the summer and the sunshine and I thought it was a perfect location to contact, continue with our series on the science of happiness. So today we're going to be talking about the science of happiness and in particular gratitude and how gratitude can contribute to our happiness. So I give you a code word every, um, every week. So our code word for today is thank you. And I'll tell you in a little bit how you can use that code word to win a prize. So again, I am Dr. Keisha Moore of Life and Focus Coaching. I'd love to know who you are. So please do type your name below, introduce yourself. I'd love to be able to say hello and know where you're joining from. And today we're going to be talking about the science of happiness and what science has to teach us about how we can live happy lives. So welcome Donato, it's so great to have you here. If you are interested in increasing your happiness and you know other people who are interested in increasing their happiness and basically who's not, why don't you tag them and invite them to join the conversation. We'll have an opportunity for you to ask some questions that you may have about how you can increase your happiness. But right now we're going to talk about what science has to teach us about happiness and how we can be happier. So there's this great quote um, that I love. I think it's from um, Naomi, uh, Naomi Williams. And she says, you cannot be happy and depressed at the same time. And I love that quote because it, it's actually true. And as we spend more time focusing on what we have to be grateful for, it increases our happiness and it lowers our risk of depression. And I'll share with you some studies from science that we have that actually show that relationship to be true. But happiness and gratitude really do go hand in hand. And that's why I wanted to spend our time today being focused on gratitude. So gratitude actually comes from the Latin word gracias, which means uh, grace, graciousness, and gratefulness. And I love that because I think gratitude is really all of those three things combined. And when we express gratitude, we feel loved and connected to something much bigger than ourselves. And that's part of the reason why having an attitude and a regular practice of gratitude actually does increase our health and our happiness and our well-being. So there's this really famous study by Martin Seligman, who is the father of positive psychology. And he did this study when he was at University of Pennsylvania. And they were looking at people who were um, admitted to, um, to hospitals for 411. So they're kind of um, admitted for mental breakdown or some mental challenges. And he did an exercise with them where in this intervention, he asked them to think of someone in their life that they knew who deserved to be thanked but had never been appropriately thanked and to write that person a letter. And so this is what the people did. And granted, these are people who are not in a good place emotionally themselves, but they did this and they wrote the letter. And this intervention was the most effective intervention of all of the different psychological interventions that were done over those uh, 48 hours that the people were in. And we saw that once the people were writing these letters, that their rates of happiness, their reported happiness increases, their depression decreases, and that this um, intervention is effective even one month later. So they returned to the people who had done this intervention and saw that the boost in happiness that they got from just writing a letter of thanks, of gratitude to others, stayed with them over the course of that month. 
So that's just one of the many studies that we see how the practice of gratitude actually has long-term implications for our happiness. In another study, um, they were looking at how gratitude actually changes the structure of our brains. And we realized that gratitude actually activates different parts of our brain. It activates our hypothalamus, which is the part that decreases our stress level. And gratitude also activates the back part of our brain, our reward center, our feelings of pleasure. And so practicing gratitude literally changes the structure of our brain. And it helps our brain in terms of managing stress and also helps our, our brains to feel more pleasure, which is where that happiness comes from. So I wanted to spend a few minutes talking with you about the impact of gratitude in increasing not just our emotional, psychological health through happiness, but also increasing our physical health. And so gratitude has that double benefit. And there is a study where they had 200 undergraduates and they asked them to complete diaries for 10 weeks. And so they only needed to write in the diary once a week and they divided them into three groups. So one group of undergraduates, they said, okay, we want you to write in your diary once a week something that you're grateful for. What are the blessings in your life? And so um, that group did that. The second group, they asked, just write whatever it is that you want to write. So it's neutral. They didn't receive any specific instructions. And then the third group, they asked them to write about the annoyances, the things in their day or in their week that bothered them. And so lo and behold, at the end of 10 weeks, the group that did the gratitude had much higher rates of um, happiness than the other two groups. They were um, happier and they were also healthier. That group that was in the uh, gratitude section actually exercised more. They had less doctor's visits and they reported feeling better both physically and feeling better emotionally. And so gratitude is something that does increase not just our happiness, but it also increases our health. There was another study that they did with seniors. So people who were over the age of 65 and who had significant health problems. So they had um, neuromuscular disease. And they asked these seniors with neuromuscular disease to write in a gratitude journal for two weeks. So this was a daily practice. They asked them to write every day for two weeks. And there were two different groups. So one was um, writing what they're grateful for, their blessings in their life. And the other group was just asked to write, you know, what they felt like, what was their mood for that day. And so you know the results, right? The group that expressed gratitude on a daily basis had better reports of positive mood and happiness, and they also had better reports of physical health. Um, and so their partners, the people that they were living with, uh, reported that they were happier as well. So it wasn't just something that only they felt. It was something that became obvious to those, those people around them. And these are people who have pretty serious physical health conditions, but just the act of focusing on what they're grateful for made them happier and it improved their health. And guess what? It improved their quality of sleep. So these people were able to sleep longer and they were able to have a better quality of sleep. And what the researchers were writing about is we really think it's because gratitude actually decreases your stress and worry. And so when gratitude decreases your stress and worry, you're able to um, experience more sleep, better quality sleep, and sleep is um, very much important for the body's healing response. So there are all kinds of ways in which practicing even very small acts of gratitude increases our health as well as our happiness. I also wanted to talk with you about how practicing gratitude can increase our helpfulness um, to other people. So there was another study where they asked people to do a gratitude journal. So they put them in two different groups. So one group they asked, okay, um, in your journal, write about the things in your life that you're grateful for. And then the second group, they asked them to write about 
ways that they are better off than some other people in the world, just people that they knew. And so this is referred to as social comparison. And so they looked at the results of the, the two groups of people after two weeks, and they noticed that the group of people who were writing about what they're grateful for in their own life were by far happier than the other group of people who was just writing about you know, how they were better than other people. But not just that. The group of people who practiced the gratitude journal were actually more helpful to other people. And so this was unexpected. But the group of people who were practicing gratitude were more likely to problem solve with other people, help them um, fix their problems. They were able to offer emotional support to other people. And that kind of makes sense because when you practice gratitude, you're grateful, you're happy for what you already have, and then you want to be more present and more helpful to other people. And that's part of why practicing gratitude actually improves our relationships. So we know from some research around married couples that couples who practice gratitude on a regular basis, who expect who express their gratefulness to their partner, that those couples are happier and that those couples are feel more comfortable expressing whatever concerns they may have about their relationship as well. So it's not that you, know, you can only talk about the good things, but it's when you are really grateful for the people that are in your life and you're happy to have them there then it deepens the quality of the relationship, it deepens the bond, it's a stronger relationship, and then you feel more comfortable addressing some of the other things that can make the relationship even better. And so practicing gratitude and gratefulness for the people that we're in relationships with actually helps us to have stronger relationships. This is true not just for our personal relationships. But gratitude also helps us to have stronger relationships at work. So I want to share with you the study that was done at University of Pennsylvania's business school, Wharton. And in the study, um, they had pe employees who uh, work for the alumni office, and their job is to raise money for the school. So to call people and ask alumni if they would donate money. And so one group of people were just given their regular instructions um, to call and this is how you make the calls and this is how much money we're trying to raise and whatever. The second group of people actually had the same instructions, but they had the director come to them and express appreciation and just say, thank you for doing this. This is so important for us. I really appreciate you doing this work with us. Now, they're all getting paid. And they all have the same job. But the people who were in that second group where the director said thank you and expressed appreciation for their work, they worked so much harder. They actually made 50% more calls than the other people in the other group. So guess what? You can increase your team's productivity by 50% just by saying thank you. Everyone wants to be appreciated. And when we express gratitude in our relationships, be they personal relationships or professional relationships, they not only increase our happiness personally, but they also increase the quality of the relationships and they also increase the outcome of those relationships. And so um, this is my freebie I'd like to share with you about a study that helps us understand how we can deal with people who are in very high power positions but have very low levels of emotional security. All right, so we can think about the worst boss you've ever had. So somebody who has a lot of power but is pretty much an insecure person emotionally. So how do you deal with them? And in this particular research study, they found that gratitude and expressing gratitude and appreciation disarmed those people. And it helped them um, to temper their responses. So there is a power in just saying thank you and just smiling and expressing gratitude and appreciation, 
even if the other person is not being the most mature and reasonable person in the conversation, there's still power to saying thank you. And so those are the studies that I wanted to share with you. Just as a reminder, I know that you know we're supposed to be grateful, but I wanted you to understand the science behind it and to know what gratitude actually does for us and how it fundamentally changes our life, our happiness, our health, and our relationships. And so I wanted to end with asking you, how do you express gratitude? What are the rituals that you do that allow you to reflect on this is what's about my life that's really great, this is what I'm really enjoying? So you can type those in now. I'd love to um, to see them, to hear them, to share them with other people. I know for me, one of my favorite gratitude practices is every morning I give myself um, a challenge of stating five things that I'm grateful for. And it's challenge because I require that there are five new things every day. And so it can get to be difficult sometimes, but it forces my mind to really think about there's so many wonderful things in, in my life and in the world and so many things to be grateful for. And I always feel better after I've done that challenge. So whatever your gratitude practice is, I want to encourage you to continue with it. I'd like to suggest to you that there are really three different kinds of gratitude practices. And so you might want to practice doing some of the other kinds, depending on which one yours is. So the first type of gratitude practice is what we call interior gratitude. And that's when you reflect within your own self about what you're grateful for in your life. So that's kind of what I do on my own devotion time or sometimes when people are saying grace before they're their meal that's a way of thinking in yourself this is a wonderful blessing and I am taking a moment to reflect on how valuable that is so that's the interior gratitude the exterior gratitude is the second kind of gratitude and that's when you actually say thank you you express that gratitude to someone else who has done something or is the kind of person um, that is really adding value to your life or to your world or to your company. And so a lot of times we feel gratitude for people, but we don't really tell them. And um, that's a missed opportunity. It's missed for us and it's missed for them. So the next time you think, oh, you know, that person really did a great thing for me, say thank you. Go out of your way, write a letter to somebody who you haven't seen in a while and tell them, you know, what, who they, what they mean to you or what something that they've done is meant to you. Remember what the people who were depressed and in the hospital did? Just that act of writing that letter increased their happiness for a month. So if you haven't been in the regular practice of expressing your gratitude to others, I would encourage you to do so and see what that does for your life. And the last type of gratitude that um, I would encourage you to try to practice is gratitude for the small things. So we often um, kind of focus on, oh, I'm so grateful for my health and for my family and that you know our country is not at war and all of these big things. And that's wonderful. Those are things we should definitely be grateful for. But there are so many small things in life that we can say thank you for. You know, thank you for the warmth of the sunshine on my skin. Thank you that, you know, that was my favorite jam that just played on the radio. And that just made me feel so good and brought a smile to my face. That when we take the moment to what we call savor those small things, it actually increases our happiness and our enjoyment of those things. So those are three ways that you might consider kind of adding to or expanding in your gratitude practice. I would love to share with you this happiness challenge that I have created and I'm encouraging people all month to do as a way of increasing their happiness. I've created um, a guide that I call um, 
the Happiness Daily Half Dozen. And so there are six specific activities that you can do that only take a few minutes. You can do them every day. And these are activities that are grounded in research that show us there's empirical science to show that doing these activities significantly increases your happiness. So if you're interested in getting this guide, I'd love to send it to you. All I need for you to do is to inbox me with the code word that I shared at the beginning of our video. So if you didn't get the code word, don't worry, on the replay, it's at the very beginning. You can get it, you can inbox me. I am sorry, I usually do our Stress Busters live from my business page, so that's where I want you to inbox me at Life in Focus Coaching. And um, I'll love to, once I get that inbox from you with the code word, I'm going to send you out the happiness, six, happiness half dozen. So you can do that every day and increase your happiness. It has been a pleasure spending these moments with you. I love reading new science on how we can improve our lives. And I love sharing it with other people and, and sharing that knowledge so that you can increase your happiness and your joy. That's my desire. So again, I am Dr. Keisha Moore of Life and Focus Coaching, and I am wishing you a life that is full of meaning, purpose, and joy. Have a great day.